Well, how do there, people in the view of us? As I, Captain of the Steves, and today challenges us a cup of tea with Captain Steve video. But this is going to be a bit different because I'm going to be bringing to you guys in the view of us some speculation around the space stations. Yes, I've made the decision that I'm just going to jump on in. I'm going to speculate on what I think this might mean for everybody inside of the view of us. Of course, with speculation, it's just ideas. It's things that are inside of my head that might not ever come into iteration. Yeah, so here we go. We're going to be jumping over into game and I'm going to be showing the space stations anyway. So, so yeah, people might not know what I'm on about. So we might as well go on over and uh, I'll show you guys firsthand. So here we go. Kapow! And hopefully we're in. Yep, we're spawned in. Okay, so I'm inside of a station right now, people. Let's just wait till I get some controls and, uh, yeah, my textures. Any time now. There we go. There's my textures. Right, so if I fly on out of this space station and... This is mainly a cosmetic look and change to the outside of the stations at the moment, people. Now, as I fly out of here, it's probably a bit more visible on the way in. I'll show you on the way in um, something that I've spotted. But if I fly on out of here and just spin around, this is just a, one of the new station types that you're going to see. You can see there it's nicely coloured. It's all lovely and red and it looks pretty darn angry. When you fly around the back of these, there are some new sorts of engines on the rears of them. So let's head on round. And I haven't come across one myself that hasn't got these engines on the back. All of them that I've seen have got these gnarly engines. However, people out there in the viewerverse have told me that they've seen some that haven't got engines on them. However, on the sides of them and things like that, there are sorts of ventinous vents that look almost like they are thrusters of some kind. So anyhow, there we are. Let's fly around to the front of this. So something that I've noticed as you're flying into this is there's some sort of disconnect with the actual entry point and also the interior of the actual station itself. So let's, uh, let's go in and I'll show you what I mean. So you see that black entrance? You can see part of the runway through it. Look. So you see down there? You can kind of see a giant gap at the top there. You see it? So there you go. You can you can see all the way through the freaking thing, in fact, at the moment. So the interior doesn't mesh into the exterior of these new freight these new stations. Not properly. There you go. Look, I've done it. I think I've done it a bit better there. There you go. Look, there's this big giant swathe of a gap at the top. You see it here? Now, when ships fly in at the moment, they sort of fly in through this gap inside of our normal iteration of space and fly in through the ceiling. So if I land in here and jump on out, I'll show you what I mean. You're going to see ships fly in through the ceiling. Now, they've been doing that inside of no and inside of unmodded No Man's Sky for freaking months. For months they've been doing that. So if I just watch when a ship flies in, it's going to fly in through the ceiling up about there. It's going to fly in. And you can kind of see in that archway. You see how this archway goes up here. If you continue that up, it sort of goes up there, doesn't it? Well, like I just showed you momentarily ago. So this archway is a lot smaller than the actual proper physical entrance of these new exterior shells that we're seeing right now. See that? It just came in through the, the ceiling. And that one just came in through the freaking ceiling of the actual um, station itself. And that one... You know, and they're flying through this sort of mesh that's here too. This archway, they're kind of interfering with that too. Now, this hauler, if this hauler parked on this platform over here, where this, this sort of fighter is right now, the actual wing of that hauler, the spikes of it, will be going up through this mezzanine. And you won't be able to sort of walk past it. It would sort of get in the way. The ships are too big for this area inside of the actual station. Okay, so yeah, and that's been a that's been a thing for some time also. When you go over to this and you see the station core at the back here, you've got these blue lines. Now each of these blue lines are a flight path. When you look at this, look, flight path and landing overseer. Okay, so those are flight paths. All right, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. Twelve flight paths. We have only got ourselves one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight landing pads. I think that this area inside of here is due for a change. I think we're going to have 12 landing pads inside of here. One of them 
with the red landing pad inside of that flight path is probably going to be our one that says that there's an anomaly or an error there. I mean, we are an anomaly as a traveller, aren't we? So perhaps that's why it's errored out as one landing pad has got an anomaly on it. I don't know, but I think we're going to get 12 landing pads in here. I think it's going to be a lot higher in here because ships fly in through the freaking ceiling. What they do with the vendors is anyone's freaking guess. But that's my sort of speculation based on logic and based on things that we're seeing in game currently inside of current iteration people out there inside of the viewerverse now back to those engines on the rear of this actual you know space station itself people is it kind of alludes to that there might be some kind of movement inside of these space stations or we might have the ability to move these space stations now i'm wondering whether we might get station ownership we have got this station override that's been teased to us for freaking years now about two years roughly and it's interesting. I'm wondering whether Hello Games put this inside of the game, along with these nice station cores and all sorts of stuff, to see what we speculate on, to see what people want to have happen with these space stations. And I've done loads of speculation around what these might mean. Yeah, I put a video up there of the three things that I think it might mean, but I'm just going to go over them quite loosely anyway. So it could be that the station override itself might just shut down sentinel ship scans inside of these systems because now we can smuggle stuff from pirate systems into these systems as soon as you do the station core fires up a scan and sentinels come on you like freaking like i don't know flies on shite people it may be just using the station override shuts down the sentinels inside of the system who knows because it seems to be a bit backwards in doing that because you'd have to go into the station to shut it down to then fly around outside which you've already been flying around outside anyway, so it doesn't really make sense if they put that in. So maybe the station override will allow us to have ownership of a station, which would be quite cool. To what ends, though? You know, maybe we could actually set the station as being a hub. And if we set it as a hub, maybe we've got certain settings we can tweak. We can maybe allow PvP in that area. And um, when people come to visit that hub, it will come up, warning, this is PvP on. You can't turn it off if you visit here. Do you? Are you sure you want to visit? You know, and then we could have warring factions in games, all sorts of other stuff, and it might lead to in-game guilds. And I was also thinking if you do register your hub inside of game, maybe it could automatically populate, populate the Galactic at this website that Hello Games runs, and it takes out that manual sort of step that they have to interject and use. So there could be a lot to do with station ownership with the station override. The next thing, which I think is completely out there, people. So that's, that's there's, there's three things. So the station override, it might shut down scans in the system from Sentinels. The next one, like I just mentioned, might be station ownership, bringing the like set in hub zones, player guilds, all that sort of lovely shenanigans, and your own custom settings for your own area of space. The last one, this one I think is completely out there. So I started at Tame, went to what I think it could be intermediary. This is kind of like my wish list. This is kind of like my wish list idea. And that is you stick in the station override and what it does is it warps you from normal space and puts you into a different area of space. And I'm thinking maybe those engines on the back are sort of like a, a, a sign that that might be something that might happen. I mean, if you look at the stations now that you've currently got in game, they haven't got the engines on the back. So I'm wondering whether it might take us into the void or the realm of glass in a roundabout way. And it's just maybe an alternative realm of what we're seeing now. So same planets, but when you go there, they're all infested or they're all abandoned or they've got some sort of quirk about them. I'm not talking like complete like fractal overhaul or super formula or something like that. Unless Hello Games got rid of base building in this alternate dimension and then they can do whatever they want because they said that they've got a nice problem. And that nice problem is, is that the player base owns all these universes that they've got right now. And yeah, so adding in a second dimension where they, they don't have the players owning sort of systems and having hub zones and all that sort of shenanigans or having bases there allows them to do whatever they want. And we could go to Crazy Town then when it comes to the mathematics and whatever they want to bring in. They could bring back all the planets of yesteryears with those giant snaky things all over the sort of planet surface and terrain and all sorts of lovely stuff. So that's where I'm going with it. I think that the station's interiors are going to have an overhaul because we're seeing ships fly in. Also, ships have got larger and they're now sort of interfere with the mezzanines. So it needs that overhaul when it comes to interior size. Whether it does anything to the vendors or anything like that, I'm really not sure. Another thing to note, though, is when you fly on out of here and you take a look at these stations, what's the first thing you think of when you see this new station design? For me, 
I, I think of two things, but firstly, I think these look just like the freaking Colossal Archives down on planet surfaces. I don't know about you, but that's kind of where I'm going with it. I mean, look at that top section. That looks like it's a straight off of a freaking Colossal Archive. I go to a Colossal Archive base on my PlayStation in the moment. But yeah, I see that as being more like the Colossal Archive. But this centre sort of structure here looks very similar to maybe the station core at the back of it. And it almost looks sentinelized. It almost looks like sentinelized technology mixed with what we're seeing on planet surfaces. It does make me wonder if we might get even a new swathe of lore when it comes to Sentinels and also maybe the Archives and the interactions between these space stations and also the Archives on planet surface, people in the viewerverse. So that's kind of my speculation on what I think might happen with the actual stations themselves. So now I want to talk a little bit about the actual the, the, the relationship between the archives and perhaps the stations and what might happen there. So just bear with me one second while I fire up my PlayStation 5. Righto people, well I've got all my PlayStation ready, so let's jump on over, shall we? And we'll have a quick look-see over there. Chikapa! We're over at my archive base. Right, well, now inside of the archives, we've got something that's quite interesting. If I go to this, look. Exploration Guide Local Information Register. And you can see here it tells you how many creatures you've discovered, how many planets you've scanned, and the flora, and all sorts of other sorts of stuff. It tells you all about the system. And it kind of almost promotes you to start exploring and scanning the system, but to what ends? Local Information Register. Okay, just keep that in your mind. And this is every single system you go in, you get a new log inside of your mission entry that almost feels like you've got objectives to do. But they've never tied this to anything, people inside of the viewerverse. And it makes me wonder why. Since right over here, you have this terminal right here, which you don't get anywhere else apart from at these archives, yeah? Now this archive is called the Local Information Repository. So here we go, I'm going to go into here. Local Information Repository. So it almost makes sense that you're going to get that local information sort of register that you've got to put into the repository. Now what this machine does right now is you can see that it's got a giant map on it, it's got all sorts of locations on it and waypoints on it, loads of them. You can see loads of waypoint markers on there, yet at the moment it only prints you one map. And the map that it prints you is just a planetary print chart and it takes you to a, a local treasure. A local treasure that um, is a little bit cack, to be honest. The local treasure you get is going to be like one of three different treasures. Now, if I go in, <laughs> I go into here and go into my wonders catalog. The very first tab is treasures. Now, I've been digging up treasures for some time, and all it does is replaces out the things that you see in here, okay? It doesn't really populate much more going on here, and I've dug up quite a lot and searched a lot, and I haven't managed to get it to stop changing just the three that I've currently got inside of here. Now, I'm wondering whether they're going to introduce more planetary treasures, and I'm wondering whether these treasures, once you take them over to the um, weird little machines over here, that sort of changes them to something good or better, I'm wondering whether it might give us some cooler S-Class modules that you can't buy inside of shops, maybe. You know, maybe you might be able to get the incinerator doing that, and maybe an S-Class module for your incinerator, or completely new weapons or modules that we haven't seen, maybe some new ship tech or whatever. So yeah, maybe they're going to do something like that, and then tie this to maybe the actual stations and maybe the missions that you get from the stations are more revolved around exploration and digging up stuff on planets and doing more to populate your wonders catalog maybe it's going to be a bigger feature i mean why else would they put it inside of the current iteration if that wasn't to be the case i've actually collected all the glitches now lovely jubbly so i have been working on my actual catalog in the background and still playing about with this although i haven't been doing the wonders episodes anymore people i have been playing about with this to see if i could get it to do more on this screen. I've been sending my frigate missions out on, on missions to see if that brings me back treasures, but no such luck as yet. But I'm, I'm going to keep experimenting there anyway and see if I get any more theories off the back of doing that. But anyway, people, so I'm wondering whether they are going to tie these archives to the actual station. In fact, actually, let's just jump back over there for one second and let's just have a better look at this colossal archive because look at it. It, it kind of looks fairly in keeping with what we were seeing up at the actual space station. I mean, this one's got a freaking giant ball on the top of it, but even still, 
That even looks like the station core, doesn't it, at the back of stations? And it has got some of the new textures and things that we're seeing on these actual space stations that we're seeing now. This looks more in keeping with the new types of space station than the old space station. Let's just put it that way. And it's like this actual bottom half here. That looks very much like some of the stuff that we're seeing on these uh, new space stations. It's like these sort of giant beacons that we've got dotted about here. Well, they're at the actual mouth of these new stations, aren't they? It does feel like these were planned at the same time as the new stations. And I kind of feel it would make sense to bridge the two and give them some sort of communication meaning between the two. Now, down here is also, curiously, a guild agent. Yeah, there's like a little guild convoy here. Now, you talk to these people all the freaking time, and they just give you maybe a little mini trinket up on the stations, but down here they don't really do much at all. So I'm wondering whether they might tie that together as well, with guild missions and things like that. If you are owning the actual station in the system, perhaps you can actually access some missions down here from this guy, rather than having to go all the way back up to the station again, is what I'm thinking. And I think these might come more integral. So, you know, if this speculation does pan out to be something rather than nothing, what I would suggest you do is get yourself a base at one of these archive hubs. I mean, I've built this lovely thing. Look, I even put gun turrets on it. I mean, yeah, they're not functional, but it's just a bit of freaking fun. I've got my own little market vendors and stuff like that. I've built up some little stalls here and stuff. But yeah, if you want to nick some ideas from this, feel free. I mean, yes, I always say that if somebody actually copies you in, a, in some way or shape or form, it's a sign of flattery more than anything. So do knock yourselves out, people. Rip this off as much as you like. Yeah, pretty darn freaking sweet, huh? I've even got like a little, um, I've got, I've got all sorts going on here. But anyway, I don't know why my ship is stuck up there though. That's a bit of a, that's a, bit of a bind, isn't it? <laughs> anyway, people, so that's a lot of the actual speculation that I've got around this. I'm hoping that they're going to add gameplay elements into the whole station overhaul. If they do a station overhaul. I mean, you've got to keep speculation as in check. Don't set this as expectation because the last two updates that Hello Games have delivered in haven't delivered much in way of gameplay or much else. They've added in a load of visual improvements and funny enough those visual improvements can be seen quite a lot at these colossal archives with like smoke and all sorts of other stuff. I mean jumping back over into here you can see like there's smoke coming down there like particle emitters and all sorts of other stuff. There's um, the lightning effects at the top of there. You can see all other smoke effects coming out of here. <laughs> Look you can see one of the old style stations just hanging there up there right now. In fact I'm gonna fly back up there I might have to move my ship though because I think that's going to just cause massive issues. And I'll just show you that there's no engines on the actual back of the actual current stations right now just to sort of show a point with the engine thing. Because I would like to hope that the, the reason why they've added engines is to give some sort of sense of movement. I mean if I call in the Nexus as well people, I'll show you the rear end of the Nexus because maybe people haven't looked at the rear end of the Nexus. I don't know. So let's, let's do the Nexus quickly because I can do that right here boom and let's just fly around the back end of the nexus most people just fly in straight through the front but go around the rear of this and you've got this little quadrant of engines on the rear of it okay okay well that's interesting you don't <laughs> however let me show you something inside of the nexus which is quite curious then because inside of the nexus there's a hologram of the nexus that shows it with having engines so maybe there might be a visual overhaul at some point to the actual ne Nexus. This is taking me freaking ages to fly around to the bloody front of it. Okay, well let's go inside. And you know what, I can use the teleporter to get to a station in from inside of here, can't I? Let me in! Okay, well that's, that's knackered. I don't know what's going on there, people. It's not letting me into the old Nexus. <laughs> what the? Oh, it only does this when you're bloody filming, doesn't it? Go on, let me in. There we are, we're going in now, people. Anyway, I'll cut it for a second, and I'll come back to you when I get to the actual hologram. Okay, people, well, here I am, and look, it's just rotated round, and there's, like, three engines on the back of this thing. When I say it's a hologram, it looks like a still life of the dang thing, but it looks like it might gain engines on the rear. And look, there's the entry point at the front. You know what? I just assumed that it did have engines on the back all the blank in time. But it seems to be that they only appear on this diagnostic of the actual space anomaly, which is freaking weird. I mean, why the, what the fudge is going on there then? Why has it got engines here, but it hasn't got engines out there? 
strange but there we go there's that anyway people let me go and use this teleporter inside of here to jump over to a station i'd fly out of a station and just show that there's no engines on the actual back of a station but i think you can take my word for it but then again i did flap up just then didn't i <laughs> Okay, peeps, well, I'm inside of the normal station. Let's fly on out, and this is on my PlayStation 5. And let's fly on round the back of this station, then, people. Meow. Dum, 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 dum. Station, station, where are the... Okay, so there's the station. So the entrance is round the opposite side of this. And you can see here, there's nothing on the back of it. There's nothing at all. Let's just fly all the way round it. And there's the entrance, just there. There's the entrance that side. You can see there's no engines on this thing at all, people. So yeah, it's it's a bit curious why they've chosen to add them. Even if it's just a visual thing, it kind of feels to me that they're now some sort of proper spaceship rather than just serving this, the sense of being a station that just looms there. It's almost like they have got a new sense of purpose and movement is where I'm going with those people inside of the viewer verse. Right, so there we go. Let's um let's just end off on that for a second, people. Let's just exit out of the game. Love and jubbly, quick command slide. Boom. Now, there's something else that I've got. I've got another theory, okay, people? So if you go to New Game, you've got this expedition here, Utopia, right now. I mean, it's only got two weeks remaining. I don't think we're going to see anything in way of update, at least for those two weeks. So maybe something mid-April. However, I'm also thinking inside of Utopia, you've got these colossal archives that we had to go to pretty much all the time. And we was building bases inside of an abandoned system. Now, at the end of this expedition, if you go back to that system that was abandoned, it's no longer abandoned. It's actually got a normal space station. Before, its space station was all broken to fudge if you went to visit it. It was in pieces. After you completed the Utopia expedition and jumped away from that system, then jumped back, the system's all sprung into life, and it's got a new space station there, like the ones that we see now. So I'm wondering whether Hello Games might add that into game as well, and maybe we're going to be interacting with the Colossal Archive, registering discoveries, and once it gets to a certain extent inside an abandoned system, and you sort of jump out of the system, jump back, or there's other, some other trigger, maybe it's going to repopulate those abandoned areas of space and bring in a new space station. And the funny thing is, is abandoned space stations, when you fly into them now, your actual dashboard of your ship says welcome home upon the actual front of it. In fact, I'll show you in a second. We go to one, I'll show you it. But I'm wondering whether abandoned systems are going to be part of the next update and bringing them back into life, just like we did inside of Utopia. Now, I don't think this is outside of the realms of speculation too far, because when they brought in Emergence, and they brought in those worm burrow nests on infested planets, we now have those worm and burrow nests inside of normal game so what we saw in an expedition has come into game so i kind of think that they might do the same again with this okay now i'm at this this is a boundary failure or a failed boundary now these haven't been used for anything for some time now these appear on exotic planets and they appear inside of abandoned systems and on also infested planets quite often now you do get some lore snippets from here which are pretty darn freaking cool, to be fair. It kind of breaks the fourth wall, and then in the end you just get error, at error, Atlas, they see you. Well, who is they, and where do they see you from? Considering this is a boundary failure, it almost feels like maybe in another reality between the two boundaries. It's kind of how I read into it, yes. And also, these things are big enough for you to fly any ship through. You can fly through one of the larger explorers, the haulers, whatever, through the actual mouth of one of these things. Now, these things have been here since day dot inside of No Man's Sky. There you go, I'll fly through it. Now, done. Dilly done. See? Lovely jubbly. Anyway, we're here to fly on up to the abandoned station inside of this system, because this is an abandoned system. You can see there it says Spack Station. It's, it's very sort of odd, that actual reading, but the really re weird reading is when you fly into it and what you see on the actual dashboard console. You see that little nodding head figure that I've got there of Apollo? Right behind him, you want to be watching that screen where it shows my pulse engine active right now. So as I fly in, watch that, people inside the viewer verse, because it's pretty darn freaking 
freaking interesting. Now these stations are all broken to fudge. Now inside of the actual game files right now there's no broken stations. So I'd imagine they're just going to continue to look like this and maybe after we've restored balance to this sort of area by doing tasks or doing something with the actual archives and registering it with the actual space station, maybe it's going to rebuild itself is what I'm thinking. And then NPCs are going to visit that system. Maybe we might have some control over these systems. But there you go, look. Welcome home, NMSA Damash Smash. That's what I named it, NMSA Damash Smash. Welcome home there. And yeah, Damash Smash is another content creator. He goes by the handle of Good at Game. He's got an awesome channel. Check him out. But anyway, welcome home there. Lovely. Right, well, if I jump on out of here, yeah, as you can see here, this station is completely knackered. It doesn't have a station core on it or anything like that. But who's to say that that's going to remain the case? It didn't remain the case inside of Utopia. So we know it's possible there is some sort of toggle or trigger to actually regenerate and revive these systems because we've done it inside of the most recent expedition, people inside of the view of us. So that's all my speculation. My speculation, in a nutshell, is I think we're going to get larger inter interiors inside of the stations, increasing the landing pad count to, say, 12 landing pads. I mean, even in expeditions, when it gets quite busy, I've seen ships just stuck in the mouthway of a station until another player flies out to free up a landing pad. So I think they're going to do that. I think they're going to increase it to 12 landing pads inside the station, pad the stations out, make them a little bit bigger, give them more meaning, give them more missions tied to the actual general archives to give us a gameplay, element and I'm hoping they're going to be working this into the abandoned systems as well where we can revive them and rejuvenate them to give players another thing to do. Now I did do a whole video on professions in No Man's Sky and one of them is rejuvenating systems and I'll give you a link to that up there. If you've liked this video on speculation and ideas hit that one up because that's full of speculation ideas around professions. Things that might come into game for No Man's Sky maybe one day that might add in jobs and things to do. Anyway so yeah with speculation like i put out there at the start of this video just don't set as an expectation it could just be that it's going to be a cosmetic overhaul to the outside of stations to keep the actual visual elements with the actual ground systems that we're seeing now the colossal archives in check with what we're seeing in space it could just be a visual enhancement they did enhance explorer ships some time ago and that's all they did they didn't do anything to the interiors of the actual explorers didn't make them any bigger or, or, or nicer or more spacious just done it to the outside this could just be something cosmetic they might have got in a new designer that was showing off what they could do design wise and they said yeah you know what yeah and they might have just left them in the game files and it's never going to get turned on that's another possibility it might be that we might not ever see those stations look and feel brought into the game but i would say that every single one that i have seen has been procedural and has been awesome and considering that they're making a procedural engine which is awesome it goes quite well into that and we haven't seen procedural stuff come into no man's sky since settlements really so adding this in shows that they're still working on their procedural engine and i can't see them just dumping all this work for nothing you know the incinerator i kind of get that it it, it, it clouds vision especially on sort of uh, playstation vr so why that that can be excused it's also like the lifts with freighters they didn't really work even inside the game files so maybe they've they've dumped that one shelved it but these i don't see why they would shelve them because so much work and love has gone into them and they look amazing and what i would say is they look better but not only do they look better i'd say they're more optimized i wasn't losing any frame rate when i was flying around space and going around those space stations they're beautifully optimized and they look better. So why would they freaking chuck them out the window? I don't think they are. I honestly think the look and feel is going to be coming into No Man's Sky in the next update or large update. I mean, if they put out another expedition and a smaller update, maybe some of the smaller updates that they put in there might hint at what's to come. It's like I still think they might tie in this new Wonders catalogue and Discoveries area into all of this somehow, especially when it comes to those treasures, and I'm really having trouble in padding it out. If you've managed to get all that those treasures filled in, please hit me up with a DM or a message or something, perhaps on Twitter, that's where I'm most likely to respond. Hit me up on there, and yeah, I would love to see what you've managed to unearth and how you've managed to get your treasures populated. But until next time, people in the view of us, take care, goodbye, goodbye, and goodbye again.